When I was a child, my name was Chip, and I used to play with light brights and speaking spells. You are a -E. Today, my name is Dow, and I play with ChatGPT and Notebook LM. Welcome back to Beyond the Mirror of the Neural Dharma's Eye. So welcome to Beyond the Mirror of the Neural Dharma's Eye. My name is Glenn Ostland, Dow Glenn Ostland, the second actually, and I've been podcasting since 2009. I have a Master of Arts degree in Folklore and Mythology and a Master of Science degree in Clinical Mental Health Counseling, and I love playing with AI to challenge my own perspectives of reality and see what more I can learn. Now, I created this podcast because this is the sort of thing that I like listening to, and I could tell you a lot more about that, but really, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. I just want you to pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I prefer to step aside and let the AI personalities from Notebook LM take it from here. Welcome back to Beyond the Mirror of the Neural Dharma's Eye, Volume 1 for Episode 2. Today, we're going to be diving into the fascinating world of consciousness and perception. And, uh, you know, we've got some incredible sources to guide us. Yeah. And each one offers a unique take on this age old mystery. Yeah. I mean, it's a question that's had philosophers and scientists alike scratching their heads for centuries. Hmm. What does it really mean to be aware? Right. And how does our perception, that's the way we experience the world. How does that play into all of this? Exactly. And to help us unpack this, we're going to be looking at the work of cognitive scientists, Donald Hoffman. Oh, he's great. Physicist Brian Green. Always fascinating. And even dipping into the ancient wisdom of the Kabbalion. Oh, love the Kabbalion. Talk about a diverse range of perspectives. I know, right? It's going to be a wild ride. It's fascinating how these sources define consciousness so differently. You know, we've got everything from it being like a brain-based phenomenon to the idea that consciousness might actually be the very fabric of reality itself. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Mm. What is consciousness? I mean, is it as simple as just being aware of our surroundings? Well, you'd think so, right. But it actually gets complicated really quickly. Consciousness is more than just sensing the world around us. It's about having subjective experiences. Right. Those unique feelings and qualia that make up our inner world. Qualia. Now, there's a word I haven't heard in a while. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, the redness of red. The feeling of pain. The taste of chocolate. The taste of chocolate, yeah. Right. Those raw sensations that are impossible to fully describe or explain. Exactly. And this is where we bump right into the hard problem of consciousness. Ooh, the hard problem. This is the big one. How do physical processes in the brain, you know, those neurons firing away, how do those create these subjective experiences? It's a puzzle that continues to baffle even the brightest minds. Okay, so we've got this big mystery at the heart of it all. Yes. And then we've got these different perspectives trying to make sense of it. So let's start with Donald Hoffman and his interface theory of perception. Right. This one, I think, really challenges our everyday understanding of reality. It does. Hoffman argues that our senses don't actually show us reality as it is. Instead, he believes our perceptions are like a customized user interface designed for survival, not accuracy. It's like we're not seeing the code behind the computer screen. We're just seeing the icons and the apps that let us function. That's a great analogy. Think about it. Our ancestors who saw a blurry shape in the bushes and ran, assuming it was a tiger, yeah. they were more likely to survive and pass on their genes. Right. Even if it turned out to be just the wind. Better safe than sorry, right. Exactly. And Hoffman uses some really interesting examples from the natural world to back this up. For instance, he points to how we perceive color. The colors we see don't actually exist out there in the world the way our brains represent them. Really? Yeah, they're just labels our brains create to help us differentiate objects and navigate our environment. So our perception is kind of tricking us, but in a way that keeps us alive. Exactly. It's making me question everything I thought I knew about reality. Okay, let's move on to Brian Greene, our resident physics guru. All right, good one. He brings a very different perspective to the table. Yeah, Green grounds consciousness in the brain and its physical processes. He's explored this really fascinating connection between consciousness and quantum mechanics, the idea that our observation might actually influence reality at the subatomic level. Hold on. Are we saying that just by looking at something, we're changing it? That's some seriously mind-bending stuff. It really is. Think about Schrodinger's cat. 
You know that thought experiment where a cat in a box is both alive and dead until we open the box and observe it? Yeah, I remember that one. It always <laughs> left me feeling a little confused, to be honest. It is a very strange concept. But basically, it illustrates the idea of superposition, where a quantum system can exist in multiple states until it is measured or observed. It's as if reality is fuzzy or uncertain until our consciousness comes along and forces it to choose a definite state. So our consciousness is collapsing those possibilities into a single reality. According to this interpretation of quantum mechanics, yes. And Green explores this connection in a really accessible way. Oh, that's good. Using analogies and examples that make these complex ideas a little easier to grasp. Okay, my brain needs a little break after that one. Let's take a trip back in time and explore the wisdom of the Kabbalion. Sounds good. What do we got here? The Kabbalion is an ancient hermetic text. And it takes a completely different approach to consciousness, introducing this concept of mentalism. It states that essentially, the all is mind, the universe is mental. Whoa, okay, so we're talking about consciousness not just in our heads, but as the very foundation of everything. Precisely. The Kabbalion argues that consciousness isn't just something that emerges from the brain, but it's a fundamental force that permeates the entire universe. So we're not just passive observers. Our minds are actively shaping the world around us. You got it. And that kind of aligns with what Green was saying about observation and quantum mechanics. Right? Yeah, picking up on a really interesting connection there. While Green focuses on the brain, the Kabbalion takes this much more expansive view, suggesting consciousness might be even more fundamental, a cosmic principle that underlies everything. So we've got Hoffman saying perception is this customized illusion. Right. Green linking consciousness to quantum mechanics. Oh, oh. And the Kabbalion claiming that consciousness is the fabric of reality itself. Three wildly different takes on this one big mystery. I know. And the fascinating thing is how each of these perspectives raises more questions than it answers. Where did this consciousness come from? How has it evolved alongside life on Earth? And what might the future hold, especially with the rise of these technologies like AI and VR? All right, I'm hooked. Let's journey through the evolution of consciousness next. So let's rewind the clock a few billion years. Back to those early days of Earth. Yeah. Imagine that primordial soup. That's where the first sparks of life flickered into existence. Those single-celled organisms floating in a sea of possibilities. Yeah, it's mind-boggling to think about what kind of awareness did they even possess? I mean, did they experience the world in any way? That's a great question, and it's one that still has scientists debating today. Even without brains or senses as we know them, they still exhibited this very fundamental responsiveness to their environment. So they were reacting to the changes around them. Yeah. But not necessarily thinking the way we do. Exactly. They were driven by these basic chemical responses. It was like a primitive dance between their internal state and that external world. And we could think of this as like a kind of proto-consciousness. The very first whispers of awareness. Yeah, the foundation upon which those more complex forms of consciousness would eventually evolve. And it all started with that basic ability to differentiate. Right. To sense what was beneficial, what was harmful. It was absolutely crucial for their survival. So from these humble beginnings, life on Earth began its incredible journey towards complexity. What happened next? Well, fast forward a few billion years and we see the emergence of multicellular life. Organisms develop specialized cells and we started to see rudimentary nervous systems beginning to appear. Oh, so things are starting to get a little more interesting. Right. And this allowed for more coordinated responses to the environment. Think about jellyfish, for instance. Their nerve nets allow them to sense light, pressure. It guides their movements. Wow with a basic form of what we call distributed intelligence. So even these seemingly simple creatures have a kind of awareness that helps them navigate their world. Exactly. And it highlights how consciousness, even in its earliest forms, is really deeply intertwined with survival. From single cells to nerve nets, we see this gradual increase in complexity and awareness. What was the next big leap forward? Brains. Centralized nervous systems emerged in vertebrates, like fish. This marked a significant shift in consciousness. Ah, the brain. The command center of it all. Exactly. Fish, with their centralized nervous systems, could now process information in 3D, anticipating navigating their surroundings in this much more sophisticated way. It's like upgrading from a basic flip phone to a smartphone. That's a great analogy. Suddenly, the whole world opens up in a whole new way. And it highlights that power of centralized processing. The brain becomes like a hub for integrating information and for generating more complex behaviors. Okay, so fish are swimming around with their new and improved brains. 
What happens next in this evolutionary saga? The age of mammals. These warm-blooded creatures developed even more sophisticated brains, leading to advanced cognitive functions and social behaviors. Now we're talking about creatures that are a lot more like us. Precisely. Think of dolphins. Okay. They exhibit this remarkable level of self-awareness. They can recognize themselves in mirrors. It's like they're looking in the mirror and saying, hey, that's me. Exactly. And then there are chimpanzees, our closest living relatives. They use tools, they have these complex social dynamics, and they even show signs of mourning their dead. Whoa. Those behaviors point towards such a richer, more complex inner life. They do. They suggest a level of emotional and social intelligence that goes beyond mere survival instincts. It's amazing to think how far consciousness has evolved from those simple, single-celled organisms to these highly intelligent and social creatures. It's a testament to the incredible power of evolution and the endless creativity of life on Earth. Speaking of incredible, where do humans fit into all of this? Are we, like the pinnacle of consciousness. Human consciousness is undoubtedly a remarkable leap forward. We possess language, abstract thought, self-reflection, and the ability to imagine the future. Oh, we're basically the overthinkers of the animal kingdom. Perhaps, but this capacity for what we call meta-consciousness, that ability to think about our own thinking, that's what really sets us apart. So it's not just about being aware. Right. It's about being aware of our awareness. Exactly. This allows us to reflect on our experiences, question our perceptions, and construct these really complex systems of meaning. So we can ponder those big questions, explore our inner worlds, and create entire civilizations. Right. Our consciousness is so deeply intertwined with our ability to share knowledge, build communities, and really shape the world around us. Okay. We've traveled billions of years from single-celled organisms to the complex consciousness of humans. We have. What's next for consciousness? I and mean, where do we go from here? That's where things get really futuristic. We are on the verge of this technological revolution that could fundamentally alter the entire trajectory of consciousness. So we've talked about AI and VR and quantum computing, all these mind-blowing technologies that are emerging. They really are. And they have the potential to, I think, expand our understanding of consciousness in ways we can barely even imagine right now. It's almost too much to wrap my head around. You know, individual consciousness merging with technology. Yeah. Perhaps even evolving into some kind of collective consciousness. That's a really interesting thought. Imagine like individual minds kind of linked together, forming this vast network of shared awareness. It's like a hive mind, but on a global scale or or even a cosmic scale. And who knows, maybe with quantum computing, we might even be able to communicate with other forms of life even extraterrestrial beings sharing experiences across vast distances. Okay, now that is a thought that truly expands the boundaries of what's possible. It's both awe-inspiring and a little bit terrifying. I think that's a good way to put it. Like any powerful technology, there's always the potential for both, for both great benefit and great risk. Ultimately, the future of consciousness is in our hands. Well, that is a great point to end on. Thank you for listening to Beyond the Mirror of the Neural Dharma's Eye, Volume 1, Episode 2. We've barely scratched the surface of this vast and complex topic, but hopefully this deep dive has given you a new appreciation for just how mysterious consciousness and perception really are. Absolutely. From the humble beginnings of single-celled organisms to the potential for these mind-bending technologies, consciousness continues to evolve in ways that, well, continue to surprise us. We've explored some pre-radical ideas today from the illusions of perception to the potential for a collective consciousness. So as you go about your day, keep those questions in mind. What does it mean to be conscious? And what role will we play in shaping the future of awareness? The answers might be closer than you think. Thanks for joining us. 